We're going to start with the small package and see what's inside there. Oh, okay. This tells me that one of the packages contains the new Mavic Pro drone that we've ordered because our, these are uh, spare propeller blades for the drone. We've ordered quite a lot of packages to come from either the UK, Australia, or even the USA. Uh, I think everything from the US has now arrived. Um, and last week we received the VHF radio, which is also waterproof and it floats. And also Ansha received her ring mandrel, which will allow her to make her beach jewelry to just the right size to fit everybody's fingers. This week, we got a big lot of packages. A little one, a medium sized one, and a big one. So we're just going to open them up now and see what we've got inside them. We're going to start with the small package. Um, let's see what's inside there. Oh, okay. This tells me that one of the packages contains the new Mavic Pro drone that we've ordered because our, these are uh, spare propeller blades for the drone. And now looking at the medium sized package from the size of it and weight of it, this has got to be the DJI Mavic Pro drone that we've ordered. Yes, it is. Mm -mm. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that most of you know what a drone is. It's um, a flying object with a built-in camera which will allow us to take aerial shots and just basically add a different dimension to our YouTube videos. Um, we'll do a full opening of this package a little bit later on. But yeah, this is our new Mavic Pro. Very excited about playing with that. And the big package. I'm hoping that this is a lot of the stuff I ordered from a UK marine chandlery. So let's take a look inside this one and find out what it contains. It contains a lot of green popcorn. <laughs> yeah, there's enough popcorn in here to, to sink a battleship. So let's take a look at what we've got first. Ah, yep, this is definitely the stuff from the marine chandlery. Have a lot of fun popping that big stuff later. Lots of big poppers. So one of the things we do need, in fact, one of several things we do need, is this folding black cone. And you might think, well, what use is that? Well, when we're actually under sail, but not getting enough wind, we need to turn the engine on. And then when you've got your sails up and your engine on, it's called motor sailing. And you have to display this black cone are just forward of the mast to let other boats know that you are actually motor sailing. So that is kind of a legal requirement and also a safety requirement. On the other side of the coin, you need one of these black circles that you put up when you're at anchor and this lets other vessels know that you're at anchor and therefore you can't move out of their way, they've got to move out of your way. Oh yeah. These are floating walkie-talkies uh, with a 12 kilometer radius over a sort of straight line flat surface. Uh, the reason we got these was when we're uh, scoping out anchorage positions, uh, we don't want to bring the yacht in, so we'll send the dinghy out with either Ansha or myself on it, and this way we can communicate with, with each other uh, and let each other know, you know where to bring the boat or where to stay away from. So really good that we've got those as well as our regular VHF radio stuff. Oh yes, this is um, basically a, a chart plotter a ruler, I guess you'd call it, um, but it allows you to put degrees in and all sorts of stuff like that on charts. Um, we learned all about this or use of this in our RYA day skipper course, so we've got to have one of those for our charts. And these are a very important piece of safety gear. These are our Spinlock life vests or life jackets. And the reason why we chose Spinlock was because Marika, our instructor down in Gibraltar, used them and she sang highly of the praises of them. So we've got these Spinlock life jackets too. One for Ansha. And one for me. Uh, another important piece of safety gear that you hope you're never going to have to use is the grab bag. This 
sits in a handy location wherever you're under sail or under on a passage you'll keep all your important boat documents in here and uh, your passports you'll also keep basic water and food provisions in here and maybe a VHF radio and and just stuff that if the boat hits something and starts to sink uh, you want to grab this grab bag and take off with all your important and valuable possessions inside it and that is our loot or booty for today um, I'm sure we'll have a lot of fun opening up all this stuff and uh, playing with it and finding out just how it works there's lots more to come and we'll show you what we've got as soon as the delivery guy brings it to us I think that is the sound of our chariot arriving well it's not really a chariot it's more of a dinghy and an outboard but it's got to get us for A to B so let's go and take a look at it hey Hey, guess what? It's musical beds again. <laughs> While work is being done on the boat, access to water tanks and electricity is under two beds. The princess suite, mine, and the spare aft cabin, mine, as in where I've been sleeping when I can't get into the princess suite. So I've been moving backwards and forwards a few times lately. Oh well, first world problem. <laughs> I'll just sleep here tonight like this, it's easier. Little bit of a change of scenery right now we're just waiting to be hauled out ready for our anti-fouling and uh, replacement of several of the through holes so right now we've moved from the berth we've been sort of staying at for the last I don't know week or so two weeks and we're now just waiting for this boat over here to be cleaned and moved and then the machine can come back into position to lift us out and the same will happen to us and we get to be on the hard for a probably hopefully three days. <laughs> It's always nerve-wracking when they bring the boat up on the hard, but she's been in good hands. Now she's got to have her bottom cleaned. <laughs> Thank you. 
doesn't pay to be afraid of heights because now when we want to go in and out of our home we have to go up and down these steps. It's the morning of our first day on the hard and you can probably hear in the background a very loud humming vibration noise. That's the guys down below starting the whole process by sending off the keel. So let's go and take a look and see what they're doing. <laughs> There's Fernando. <laughs> he gets the dirty job. our iron keel. First stage is getting sanded back. Obviously quite a lot of work to do there before it's ready for um, anti-fouling and more than likely after speaking to Fernando yesterday about the uh, surprising state of the anodes I think they've only been in position for just over two and a half months. Um, the keel one is not so bad on this side um, but on this side it doesn't really uh, contact, so basically the, the anodes get eaten away and it's not really providing proper protection for the keel itself. And also here on the prop shaft, this one here again is, is very very worn away from what it was just two and a half months ago. Um, and again Fernando said that really what needs to be done is this needs to be taken right back until it's super super shiny and then a brand new anode attached really tightly onto the shiny surface so it makes a really good electrical connection. So no doubt the, the uh, anodes will be replaced once everything's been sanded back. They tend to pack them in pretty tight here at the boatyard. I was hoping that while we were on the hard, I was going to be able to let out the anchor and the full length of chain to just see what condition it was in, uh, make sure the meterage lengths were marked. When we drop anchor in the open water, we need to know how much chain we've got out. But unfortunately, Paco, who's the guy who operates this big machine, he's parked us right up to the one in front of us, and there's just literally no room to drop the anchor. And then we've got this big, uh, looks like a Beneteau, coming in behind us. Um, and again, fairly close parking situation. I'm literally sitting at the top of the ladder on the back end of our boat. I think the guys have progressed really well today. Most of the sanding is done and a lot of the basic priming is done. Still haven't filled in the opposite side of the rudder at the bottom here. That's still got to be done there. It's a basic sort of coat on the shaft and prop. Got to fill all this with lots of grease so that it, uh, it does what it does, which is fold. The keel itself is still in preparation. That's kind of like the first layer of thick, sticky stuff. And uh, there'll be a couple of more layers to go on there before it gets anti-fouled. So she's looking like a bit of a patchwork quilt at the moment. But I know she'll look beautiful when she's finished. I've got photos on my phone that I want to upload onto my website because this week's blog has got lots of photos that need to be uploaded. Where we are at the moment on the hard, we're miles away from the marina which is over there which is where we get our free Wi-Fi signal from. So what I've got to do is, it's kind of bittersweet, I've got to go and have a coffee in the marina and take my laptop and phone and then I can transfer the photos to my heart's content at a really good speed. The only problem is, is that the case for my laptop is not anywhere inside the boat as you would expect. No! <laughs> It's in the forward locker, but it's not just in the forward locker, it's in one of the suitcases. And before I can get to the suitcase, and I don't know which one it is, I've got to take out everything else that's on top of it. 
mattresses, sun chairs, nothing's easy on a boat. Anyway, complaining isn't going to get the uploading done. <laughs> so this is where I start to unload the locker. So I'm on my way to the coffee shop now, looking forward to having a nice cortado or cappuccino or something and getting my photos uploaded. Yeah. It looks like a good place, isn't this? A great environment to have a coffee and do some work. Got my laptop, got free Wi-Fi, ooh and a cappuccino, gracias. <laughs> That looks awesome. All right, let's start working. Back to the boat. Hello. We still experience a little bit of wind here at the moment, as you can see from my hair and possibly here on the audio. But I just wanted to show you this quickly. Um, one of the things that we're having done is the uh, metal, kind of like thing and nylon thing that the rudder stock goes up into uh, in the uh, cockpit of the boat. Um, when, that, when we had the boat inspection done, it was um, proven to be quite rusty uh, from what the surveyor could see without getting full access to it. Well, Jose did say that he would fix that and um, what he's discovered since actually getting full access to it and taking it out is this. Now the reason why this the reason why this is so rusty is because um, where the emergency tiller hatch opens up just above it, it was leaking and letting salt water in. And over the 23 years of the boat's life, the salt water has done this to the metal, and that is meant to be a round hole. Jose has had this new stainless steel one manufactured with a new one of these from Gino. And this is what the new one looks like. As you can see, a heck of a lot of difference there. And once again, it's another thing that I'm so glad that, that's been found while we're here uh, in, the, in the marina and out on the hard, rather than finding out the hard way when all of a sudden our rudder fails and we're a few thousand miles away from land. Another job well done. Next week on Sailing ABC, our through holes and sea cocks get replaced, we modify our light fittings for LED bulbs, and we receive more goodies from the mailman. Do leave a thumbs up, subscribe, click on the bell icon, and leave a comment as we love to hear from you.